Tonight on Studios America, Glenn Beck is here with some terrifying new updates on the deep state. House Republicans are taking some big steps toward a Biden impeachment. I'll go through all of that. And I'll break down the details of Shohei Otani's wild new Dodgers contract. It's all coming up in just a minute. But first, let me tell you about liver health formula. As we approach the new year, it's time to think about becoming healthier and more energetic. Uh, why not be the best version of yourself in 2024? If you've been dealing with low energy or have gained some extra LBs, eh, you know, if you can't shake them off, the issue might be your liver. Your liver is super important for staying healthy, obviously. One in three Americans are now living with a sluggish, fatty liver. And all that booze with carb-packed potatoes you're going to be downing for Christmas is not going to help. So get prepared for 2024 because it's going to be a crazy year and you are going to need all the energy you can get. I can't guarantee a lot about 2024, but I can guarantee you're going to need all the energy that you can get. One thing that could help is Liver Health Formula. It has 11 powerful botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. Buy today and get a free bottle of blood sugar formula to reduce sugar cravings, something we all need this kind of this time of year. Uh, GetLiverHelp.com slash stew is the place to go to get this. GetLiverHelp.com slash stew. Get your free bonus gift as well. Don't miss the chance to start the year fe fe feeling your best. Again, it's GetLiverHelp.com slash stew. start tonight by doing Shohei Otani. Uh, he's a very wealthy man, a very talented baseball player. And I will just let you know up front, as America's only Toronto Blue Jays fan, if this is not going, I'm, this is not, I'm not just complaining because the Blue Jays didn't get him. That's not what this is about whatsoever. Just so you know up front, the fact that the stupid media told me 10 times that he was going to the Blue Jays and then at the last second pulled the rug out from under me. Am I, am I angry about that? No, not at all. Uh, Shohei Otani got a 10-year, $700 million contract. Now, if you don't know who Shohei is, I mean, look, he's a good baseball player. That's really the summary that you need. Uh, he's really an amazing baseball player. In fact, Pitching and hitting, I mean, is one of a kind, really. Go back to Babe Ruth before you can find someone who's doing the things that he's done. And even Babe Ruth didn't do them the way he's, he's doing them. So this guy's going to be highly valued. He was rumored to get maybe over $500 million. Then people started throwing the $600 millions around. It ends at 10 years, $700 million. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Because I mean, we could talk about the sports, the benefit, how much that costs, what that can do to your franchise if you miss on them or if you get hurt, gets hurt. There's a lot to talk about there sports-wise. But that's not really what we're doing here today. I'm fascinated by the way this is structured and why it's structured this way, uh, because this goes back to not just sports or uh, you know, any of that. It goes back to all sorts of policies that we talk about on a daily basis. Let me walk you through how this uh, happened. So the typical way, if you're going to get a 10-year, $700 million contract, you'd get 10, in, in 10 years, you'd get $700 million, which would imply like $70 million a year. Okay, that's a lot of money. In fact, it's way more than anyone else has ever received. This contract will be the richest contract in the history of modern sports. Um, and, you know, you go back and I think Mike Trout was second in baseball with 450 some odd million dollars. So a lot more than anyone else has ever received. But the details are fascinating because he's not going to get 70 million dollars every year. That's not the way this is going to work at all. What they did was defer a bunch of his salary. Now, this happens from time to time. We always bring up Bobby Bonilla Day every year because it's funny. This guy who hasn't played in a very long time is still making millions of dollars because he wind up getting a deferral of a few million dollars in his last year that was spread out over 30 years. So he's getting paid forever. A lot of athletes do this. In baseball, it happens all the time now. And they said when they announced the contract, there are significant deferrals in this contract. Significant was understating it just a tad because... The way he will get paid is not 10 years, $700 million, implying $70 million a year. He will get paid in two different chunks, essentially. The Otani way is this. In years 1 through 10, he will only make $20 million total. That's only $2 million a year. In years 11 through 20, when he's going to be probably off of the team and maybe retired, he will get paid $680 million dollars. Uh, implying $68 million a year. Now, 
That is a significant deferral, sure. And it is a fascinating thing. Now, part of the reason why this can happen is because Shohei Otani does very well with endorsements and makes about $50 million a year on endorsements. That, that's the rumored number. So he doesn't need the, number, the money right now. And yeah, why not kick it down the road? This, of course, uh, in baseball terms, allows the Dodgers to spend more on players that make them better. Maybe it wins some more championships for Otani and all, and all these things. You can understand why he'd want to do that. And it is allowed in the collective bargaining agreement. So they can do this. There's no limit on how much you can do uh, this deferral process. But, I mean, that's fascinating, right? Like, the guy is the best player in the league. He's going to get $2 million a year, which is, you know, the minimum, minimum salary in baseball is over one, I think. Isn't it like one? I think it's 1.1 or $1.2 million a year. So he's barely making over the minimum salary for the next 10 years, but then gets $680 million down the line. Uh, Shohei Otani signed a $700 million contract. He's only getting paid $2 million a year. This is from the Wall Street Journal. They have a great breakdown on some of the reasons why this is happening. And you might think, if you're Otani, like, why? Sure, there's the benefit of getting other players in there. Maybe he's just a real team guy and wants to win as much as possible. And that's certainly part of it. But there's more to it. You know, California is a place you've seen over the past you know, few years, especially, people have run from, not to, he was, signed, he was signed to play for the Angels, and he moved just across town to the Dodgers. Why would he stay in Southern California, especially when you're wealthy? They don't like wealthy people all that much there, even though they have a lot of them. They, they punish them for staying there. I mean, I think these, the tax rate is, you know, in, in the state, we'll go through it here in a second, is really high. So why would you do this? Well, it's very, very interesting. Let me tell you first about just giving you some perspective here. In total, 210 players will be making more than you know, arguably the best player in the league, Shohei Otani's $2 million base salary. So will some 400 NBA players, 752 NFL players, and 87 players on the PGA Tour. Somehow, Ken Griffey Jr., an all-time great Hall of Famer, but he retired in 2010. He will earn more money next season than baseball's highest paid player. I mean, it's a fascinating, fascinating uh, gambit here that they've made. And why did they make it? Why did Otani agree to this? All appearances and reporting are that he's the one that suggested it. He's like, I don't defer all this money. That's fine with me. Um, what's fascinating about this is partially just taxes. This is a massive bet on taxes in the United States and what's going on in Japan as well. It's really, really interesting to look at. Now, Wall Street Journal reports Otani may also find himself caring a lot about decades of tax policy debates in the U.S. Congress. Today's marginal federal income tax rate is 37 percent. And unless Congress acts, it will climb to 39.6 in 2026. If you're scoring at home, 2.6 percent of six hundred and eighty million dollars is seventeen point six eight million dollars. So <clears throat> in a way, he's making a bet on tax rates. Right. Will tax rates increase? Or will they decrease? He could take the money now, maybe with a lower rate. They might go up. If you believe that America will come to their senses and go to a free market society, you might think they're going to go down and it might be a good bet. But honestly, like, does anybody see that coming, especially with all the, the debt and deficit that we have now? If anything, it seems to me that rates are going to go up. Republicans want to keep the current rate and Democrats, including President Biden, have floated a variety of proposals that would take top, rates, top tax rates even higher than 396 percent. Those risks could be outweighed by state tax benefits. And this is where it gets fun, because if you're in California, if you know anyone who's in California, if you had a business in California, oh man, this is amazing. Starting in 2024, California's top state rate will effectively be 14.4 percent, which is significantly greater than the zero percent in Washington state, Texas, Florida, Nevada, all of which or uh, will have or have or will soon have uh, MLB teams. So you take that situation where you could have it be, you know, have a zero percent rate. So the first 10 years of this, sure, he's only making two million dollars a year and probably still I don't know what the exact threshold is for that top rate, but probably paying some of his income at that top rate, but not at sixty eight million dollars. If he gets traded to or if he decides to sign with Las Vegas or Texas or Houston or whatever, he would get 0% on that money because that money will be earned while he's living in a state with a 0% income tax rate. So he's avoiding 14.4% of that giant check. Essentially, he's signing to stay in L.A., 
but he's avoiding the taxes on like a massive percentage of, you know, 90 some odd percent of the actual earnings from this contract. Uh, an amazing idea. And, you know, it just makes you think this guy's really thought this through. Like this is not a, uh, a decision he made whimsically. And honestly, it was a, re- a big reason, I think, why it was difficult to figure out whether he would ever go to the Toronto Blue Jays. You want to go to the Blue Jays? You want to pay those taxes up there? You want Justin Trudeau's tax regime on your money? You'd have to defer all of the, uh, all of the cash or you, no one would ever want to sign there. Um, with the deferrals, uh, this is one of the uh, experts cited in the article, Packard, uh, he says Otani may be able to take advantage also of a 1996 federal law that bans states from imposing their income tax taxes on certain retirement and deferred compensation plans. That prohibition can apply if someone is receiving roughly equal annual payments over at least 10 years. So this structure of this contract is basically a way to work the U.S. tax system. Something I should point out I fully support. Good for you, Shohei. You want to go and you, you want to, these, these dopes want to raise income taxes on you? They want to give you a state income tax of 14.4%? What have we said over and over again? People who can do it, like Shohei Otani, will do it. They'll leave, they'll find another place to go, and they will not pay you a dime of that money. In California, you don't deserve a dime of it. Not a dime. So good, good for Shohei Otani. Um, now, I talked to a friend of mine who's an accountant who went through some of this, and he, th- he thinks that he may wind up saving up to $100 million due to these tax benefits that he's getting by structuring the contract this way. And look, if you think this is a sports story, it's not. Every huge business person on earth, what do you think Jeff Bezos is doing? What do you think Bill Gates is doing? What do you think uh, every, you know, Elon Musk is doing? There's a reason why these tax laws are bad. You're chasing away your most productive citizens and the citizens who are bringing in the most cash, who are spending the most cash in a local economy by jacking up rates to punish rich people, Elizabeth Warren style. Good luck with that. You want that policy? You can have it. You know, you can do that if you want. Uh, You can't do all of Elizabeth Warren's ideas because many of them are unconstitutional. But within the Constitution, you can do these things if you wish. The problem is you're going to wind up changing, uh, chasing away all the people who actually support your economy, and then you're going to be back at the government teat begging for cash to support your society. That is, uh, that is uh, uh, ill-conceived in my mind. Um, now, it's not just tax benefits we're talking about here. It's also an interesting bet when you think about the state of the world and the state of the U.S. Uh, economy right now. Think about it. Where are we? We've got a situation where you're talking about uh, inflation has hit peaks that we we were told would never happen again. Is inflation going back down to those zero percent rates? I don't know. I mean, I, it doesn't seem like it. It certainly seems like we're stuck at higher elevated rates for the for the near future. Otani's deferrals create several potential risks. There are risks here. For one, sustained high inflation could erode the value of the deal. There's a good breakdown in Axios uh, of this. Otani's big bet on inflation and the U.S. dollar. Think about that. You're betting. On U.S. tax rates, you're betting on inflation being low, uh, and you're uh, betting on the U.S. dollar at its strength. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm all for a bet here and there, but that's a pretty big gamble. Uh, 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 Otani is implicitly making a huge bet on the future path of inflation, Axios writes, betting it will be low. If he intends to primarily live in his native Japan once his baseball career ends, he's also making a bet on the evolution of the real exchange rate between the dollar and the yen. Current bond prices imply that U.S. inflation will be 2.19% a year over the coming decade. Now look, the market tells you a lot of interesting things. Do you believe that, though? You think it's going to be 2.19% over the coming decade? Remember, the target is 2%. So basically you're saying for the next 10 years, the Fed's going to nail this thing. That wouldn't be my bet, uh, personally. Um, if in- inflation uh, is, uh, comes in at a mere 1% over the plan, uh, it would be worth a $68 million payout in 2020, 2034, would be worth about $61.5 million in today's purchasing terms. So he could, you know, the $68 million is only worth about 61.5%. That's how inflation is at 1%. If it's at 2%, which is about what they're predicting, it would be $54.8 million. And if it goes even higher, like let's say 5%, it would only be worth 41 million. So that 68 is being marked down to 41 million and 5% inflation, 
Look, I mean, it almost seems optimistic at times when you look at the state of the U.S. economy and how we're spending. If inflation were to come uh, in, in those rates, it would be fascinating. Now, part of this is probably illustrated by the fact that he's from Japan, and Japan, for a very long time, has had no inflation at all, basically. They've had 0% rates forever, kind of famously, and gone into negative rates at times. So he may be betting on that as well. Um, now, the Dodgers were not the only team that offered this sort of structure. Uh, seemingly all the big uh, suitors, including the Blue Jays and I think it was uh, the Cubs and the, uh, the Giants, all offered this type of uh, – they were fine with it. I mean, a lot of teams are willing to go ahead – with big dollar deals, over $600 million, and do all these deferrals for him. And I'm a little torn on this. I mean, I do love the idea that states like California get punished for their policies. They should. States like California should be punished for these policies. You know, I don't wish ill will on the the people of California, of course, but if you're going to do this to your people, you deserve to get screwed. You deserve this. You deserve every little bit of it. People will run away from you for good reason, because you're hurting them. You're screwing them. Give people something fair, and they're not going to have to do this stuff. So I do love it for that. I love how he's kind of working the system. I love how he's avoiding these taxes that are unjust and unfair and uh, punitary. Uh, I I will also say, uh, however, that it is kind of making a mockery of the whole system of Major League Baseball. I mean, if you're going to have things like luxury taxes and try to even out these things, which I'm not necessarily in favor of, but if you're going to have them, you basically can't allow this, right? You can't allow him to get $2 million a year and, and defer $68 million. By the way, I think it comes out to um, a salary cap, something like $46 million, but it does free them up to spend a lot of money on uh, a lot of other players. And the Dodgers, of course, don't care because they have all the money uh, in the world. And they can spend and spend and spend and spend and spend and outspend every other team by a, a huge margin. And maybe a little bit um, of my, um, my jealousy plays in right there. That, that's the only part of this, though, that so far has been pure jealousy. Um, by the way, um, if you think the government is going to do a really good job controlling spending, um, you're going to love this. Uh, a half a billion dollars... That's the latest price for the gondola to Dodger Stadium. Um, in 2018, they decided they're going to put a. Now can you imagine a bunch of drunk people coming after a baseball game, going on a gondola? What does that look like? What do the floors of those gondolas look like? What is the smell of that gondola after? Oh my gosh, uh, I can't even. It's making my nose itch. I am so. Uh, I, I just the smell. I can picture it, and I don't want to picture it. But regardless of all those types of problems, in 2018. They proposed it at $125 million. Then they did an environmental impact study. And now it's $500 million in cost if this thing is going to actually happen. And if all this stuff goes down, you say, well, wait a minute. At least you're only talking about money. You're talking about overspending. You're talking about taxes. You haven't talked about the real issue. And, of course, finally, NBC News got to the real issue. And they asked the question on the minds of everyone because this is the most important thing that you can think about when you ever get a story. What do you go to? What's the most important thing to think about? And of course, just say it with me, race, right? That's all, skin color, ethnicity, that's the only thing that matters. Shohei Otani, what it means that the new face of MLB is Asian. It means the new face of the MLB is Asian, but does it really mean anything else? And who cares? Who cares if he's Asian? Well, who was the old face of the MLB? Were they Asian? Were they black? Were they white? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares about this? But yet this is the takeaway from NBC News because we always have to talk about it that way. And, and, you know, I will say you might notice and occasionally we pointed this out. A lot of people like to say, well, uh, you know, white people are evil. And with the new Barack Obama movie. Uh, has a scene where they're lying in bed and he says, never trust white people. And white people get, you know, the short end of the stick in the Ibram X. Kendi world that we're developing. But you know who gets it even worse? Asians. Uh, Asians, uh, they earn more than every other group. They, and now Shohei's helping that by quite a bit here. They earn more. They do, uh, they have higher test scores. They're getting, uh, they're getting it really, really hard, and it's only going to get worse as this goes forward. So I guess probably what that means, that we have an Asian uh, face of Major League Baseball, it means 
you know, that Asians are oppressing us or something. We have to, we have to come up with a new scam for white people. We need to be like, hey, uh, you know, these, these Asians are just, uh, they're oppressing us or something because they earn more than us and it's unfair and, and we need free things. We'll work on that another show. Maybe I'll work that out with Glenn Beck here in just a second. He joins us next. Grip6, a company in Utah that sells in the United States, but all over the world as well. And they source everything uh, right here in America. They've got great minimalist belts. They've got fantastic wallets. I love their wallets. They're totally different than the normal wallet you'd think of. It's a kind of totally different style, and you'll love it. Um, also socks, great warm socks uh, that you, know, you can wear really in any temperature, but... You know, when it gets cold in the winter, you need socks that keep your feet warm. That's really important. Plus, if you're a pickleball player, they got great pickleball stuff as well. Grip6.com slash stew. Grip6.com slash stew. I was playing pickleball the other day, and I had my, like, Walmart ra- racket that I, get, I got. And, uh, and then someone gave me, like, one of their better rackets. Huge difference. I gotta, I, I'm, I'm asking for a Grip6 pickleball rack, uh, pad, I guess paddle, I guess it is. A pickleball paddle for Christmas. I want Santa to bring me something from Grip6. Grip, the number 6.com slash stew. Grip6.com slash stew. Use the code stew and you'll save 15%. Grip6.com slash stew. The code is stew for 15% off today with Grip6. Joined now by Glenn Beck. He has a brand new special coming up 9 p.m. Eastern. Tonight, it's Trump Administration Insider exposes every level of the deep state. It's a big show. Uh, Glenn, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, did you bring a firearm? Uh, to, I did to the interview. Actually, it's um, I, it's a little disconcerting. Okay, so take I, notice how I didn't say anything sarcastic in the intro today. I know. It's, uh, I know. Did you tell me the Second well, Amendment is ineffective? So, well, pardon me. What did you say? I said, tell me the Second Amendment is ineffective. I said, yeah, nothing that's right. You said nothing. That's mm-hmm. right. And you'll continue to say nothing or I will praise the show. Pra- pra- Praise the praise you you will. Oh, I will say good things about the yes. show. Okay, yes, okay, good. Mm-hmm. So this actually is something that I'm going to talk about on tomorrow's uh, program. Let's it's see hard if to I see. Can get a shirt there. Yeah, there you go. The one day I wear black. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, it, now it's back. The black. Can you take the other shot, please? For the love of thank there you. There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it looks like a regular gun. Okay, but it's not. It's made by Burnham, uh, Burna, and it is. I think this. I'm getting. Don't tell him. But I'm getting all of my family members, including my kids, uh, you know, they're 18, Mm -hmm. uh, this weapon. Mm -hmm. It shoots, uh, it shoots, this is just a a pellet in here now, uh, but it's a very large uh, pellet, round pellet. You shoot that, it's ceramic, so it hits you hard, but that's not the good thing. What's it going to, is it going to, it's not going to go through you? It won't go through, you won't penetrate the skin, skin, but it, comes at you. This is not an airsoft gun. Okay. Okay. And it will hurt. But the better ammo is the green ammo, and that is a uh, gas. Uh, the tear gas? Tear gas okay. pellet. And so you don't even have to be that good of a shot. If you can get, if you can just shoot, you're shoot, I'm shooting at you, I wouldn't do it this close. But if I'm shooting at you and I hit your chair or any part, it takes this gas pellet and it's tear gas and mm. it's a six foot uh, really? parameter. So you're at a 7-Eleven and the place is being robbed or somebody's being beaten up. I have a hard time pulling my gun because I gotta know for sure what's going on and that my life is in danger because you never pull a gun unless you're prepared to kill. That's a big responsibility and your life changes for a year. Now, I'm willing to do it. Even if you do the right thing, your life is a disaster because right. you're going through all the Oh, they'll just drag it out forever, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, unless you live in Texas. Um, so, this is great to have as a number one. Like, if I, if I were seriously going out, if I were a policeman, I'd have this one and this one. I would have, actually, this one here that I pull with my non-shooting hand because I just have to be close, fire the pellet hit gas. If they're still coming or there's something else, then I pull my actual revolver and put you down. Mm. But my wife has been stopped at gas stations and everything else. And she's like, I said, honey, you got to carry a gun. She's like, I know, but I don't want to carry it. It's so dangerous and blah, blah, blah. She's really a good shot. But I think she has that little switch in there of, I don't want to kill somebody. Right. This. This is 
Good, is good instinct. The best. Tomorrow <laughs> on radio, I'm going to tell you where you can get it. You can just search for it. Um, a B, is it? My eyes are so bad. Uh, B U, you read it. It's Berna. Uh, yeah, B Y R N A. Okay. Looks like, and it's Berna S D. Yeah. And what about the uh, the legality of this? Is this the same as like a normal uh, in firearm? In New York or? City, if you're carrying this and you stop, I think it's a ten dollar fine. Might be a fifty dollar fine. But so it's not. It's not it's, at all classified like a normal firearm. No, it's, it's not. It's going to be. This is like tear gas, you know, having, you know, having like a mace. A mace. Okay. That's all this is. Wow. It's just in a gun form. And you can get it in orange as well in case you don't. Because I'm, I'm concerned about this. You shoot somebody, police come. You better not have that in your hand because they'll think it's a real firearm. It absolutely looks like one. Yeah. But if you mm. get one, they also make them all in orange. Oh, wow. You're going to talk about it more on radio tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's really interesting. Yeah. That seems like a good option. Okay. Um, let me go to your show tonight. Yeah. You have a Trump administration insider on. I'm going to tell kind of the backstory as to what the deep state looks like on the inside. Yeah. Um, this is Cash Patel. Uh-huh. He's uh, the guy who was, you know, DNI. Uh, he director of national intelligence. He saw all of the agencies. He was asked by Donald Trump, find out what the hell's going on. And he did. And he thought it was bad until he started really looking for it. And he was, um, he was in my office. What we're going to show you today is a chalkboard that he helped make doing the research for this show. Um, and I asked him things like, uh, who has Jeffrey Epstein's little black book? <laughs> Do you know the power of that little black book? I mean, that book has everybody's name in it. We keep saying, how come we're not investigating? My question was, who has it? When you hear who has the little black book of Jeffrey Epstein, uh, that's not good. It's really not good. Mm. That is, that's as powerful as anything JF, I mean, uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover had. It's, and it's it's on all of them. Mm, amazing. Yeah. All right. So you get into that uh, tonight on the special. Uh, yeah. I want to kind of do talk about uh, Ukraine, and it ties into. Uh, why you do know, you keep bringing this up? You know, this pisses me off more than anything. Well, that's kind of why I'm bringing it up. I'm, yeah. And I have a tear gas gun. You do well. If you move, if you put your hand on the trigger, okay. or finger on the trigger, I will. I will stop my line of questioning okay, at any time. Go ahead. Um, Zelensky appears with Biden yesterday. This is this was something that was rumored for a while. At first, they didn't do it because I think. They thought correctly it wouldn't help. I don't, I don't think this is going to win over Republicans seeing Zelensky in person. Um, but what they want, uh, and what Zelensky wants, is a bunch of cash and weapons. And Biden is signaling, well, we'll negotiate on the border. Well, we'll maybe we'll give you something on the border to do that. So let's start there. Is that how you see this playing out? Eventually, Ukraine gets the money, but there's some sort of some yeah, sort I of see gift on the border as, some sort I, of no no give on the border no. it's a an, an empty republican we won okay you mm-hmm. know but there's nothing real to it i think that's the most likely outcome that they fold like the cheap uh suit that they are <laughs> yeah okay because it, it's even republicans i think if you look at dc republicans probably 90 percent of them want to send this money Yet the American people, it's 11 percent, 11 percent. I mean, that's a massive disconnect. Yeah. A representative republic that is no longer being represented. They all want to go to war because they think the stupid people at home. We know what's going on. We understand Putin is a very bad guy. We understand what it would mean if he would take Ukraine and then go in. We know all that. What they're forgetting is we're not the United States of America that we were in 1985 or 1995 or even 2005. We're the United States of America entering 2025. And that's a broke, dysfunctional, corrupt system. We cannot keep sending money over. Where are we getting the money? I'd like to say we're borrowing it from our enemy China, but they're no longer buying our debt. We're just printing it. If you think Biden, if you think um, Putin is dangerous today, take America and break it in half. Break its dollar, break Mm. its grip. Do you know how fast Germany and France would make treaties with Russia? 
If we go away? If we went away, mm. they would make treaties in a heartbeat. We cannot continue to do the things we used to do. Back up. Strengthen yourself. Tell, it should have six months ago told Zelensky, you're losing the American people. We're not going to be able to do this. Make a deal with Putin while you still have a card to trade. Yeah, because that now it's hard for him to negotiate, Nothing. right? Even if he wanted to. Yeah. Um, so I asked you this on radio and we talked about if there was a real border solution tied to this, like if, if you were happy with the policy and knew it would be implemented, this is fantasy world because you can't know, right? The problem is they could even pass a good policy and then just not implement it. But it, would it be worth trading, you know, a hundred billion dollars to, uh, Absolutely. to Ukraine for an actual border for solution? For an actual border solution yeah. that closes the border and stops the hemorrhage? Stops it. Yeah. Yeah. As much as we're bleeding possible. to death on our border right mm-hmm. now. Okay. A tourniquet. You give me a tourniquet, yeah, it's worth that. Hmm. Okay. Would you go, let me ask you this deal. Would you approve this? Fantasy League, uh, you know, international relations here. Would you go with a deal that said, hey, Zelensky, negotiate a deal. You, I'm sorry, the land you've lost is the land you've lost. I know you want to fight for it, and you can fight for it if you want, but you're doing it without us. We're not, we're not, we're done here. We want this to be over. We will, however... Because we want to protect, you know, NATO, we don't want Russia going through your country. We will give you the $100 billion that we're promising. But you will use that for defense on the line so that they can't come later. But you have to give up the borders to where we are now and end this thing because... No, do we it, get the border security? I'm not, not in this scenario, no. No. No, not a freaking dime. No. Not a dime. Not a dime. Now, knowing that they're going to give them more than a time. This is what, this is what they try in Washington right. to make yeah. people look bad who mm-hmm. say America first. What I'm saying to you is we are bleeding to death on the border. Okay? Mm-hmm. Bleeding to death. You cannot bring 15 million people in over five years. You can't do it and still have a country. You, you have let terrorists in. We are going to pay a price for that. So, no, I'm America first. I like to help the world, but if America is too sick to get out of bed or dead, we're not helping anyone. Fix America first, then we'll help. Do you think um, there is value in getting this war over? For not for Ukraine, not for Russia, but for America. Yeah, uh, getting it over. Yes, I do too, and that's why I think it's an interesting th- thing to th- talk out. Even though I'm not sure that I Look, support it. Look, here's what they're going to do. Here's what they're going to do. Um, they're going to they're going to give another hundred million or whatever it is that you know hundred billion, mm-hmm. whatever it is that they need. <laughs> He's throwing know. around a hundred billion now. That's, what, mean, that's what we do here in America. I mean, because yesterday <laughs> we said no more money, and and Biden said, oh, I'm going to give you two hundred million. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Oh, the Pentagon budget. Wait, what? Right. It was in the budget? Uh, well, why are you asking? I don't understand. All right. So we're going to give them the money. Mm-hmm. We're not going to get any security uh, on our own border in exchange. Just not going to happen. Okay? Not even lip service. No. And they're already planting the seeds that because we even dared ask for something in return, that we wanted border security as well as helping them, that we're going to go to war. Now, they keep saying this. They've put the negotiations to where Zelensky has no cards on the table. None. Oh, you're coming to me now because America is not going to help you anymore. Well, no, but I'm still, you're still what? So they're going to they're gonna say, we're keeping the land. And is Zelensky going to say yes to that? What will happen is this will spiral out of control and they'll get the people that I think are really bloodthirsty in our administration and in the Capitol and in the Pentagon. Bloodthirsty. They want this. I don't know what their reasons are, but they want this. They're going to send our boys and maybe even our daughters off to war to be put in a meat grinder of Europe for what? For what? They keep saying they're not going to do yeah. that. And then, gosh, you know, we, we, we can't hit those numbers Let's enlist the illegals. The uh, Enlist Act is already up and proposed in the Senate. It's sitting in the Senate. 
ready to be passed by the Senate and the House that will allow the people who are here illegally to come in and serve our nation, okay? Mm -hmm. it, uh, excuse me? And for if what? they're it's of moral character, yeah. what the hell does that even mean anymore? So let them serve. Well, we can't have them on the front lines because those guys, I mean, we have to have trained people, people who are speaking English, people who know our country, et cetera, et cetera. We can't sacrifice on the line. So you bring all of our men and boys, and guess who protects the homeland? Wow. Uh, so much to go through here, uh, and there's a lot of uh, this, I'm sure, going on. Uh, it's why you should own something to secure your own family to make sure that if things go crazy, you can protect your family. Look, I'd watch the show tonight because he's got a gun. <laughs> okay, uh, Glenn Beck, the special 9 p.m. Eastern right here. Trump administration insider exposes every level of the deep state. Don't miss it. And as always, the best way to watch is with your very own Blaze TV account. Head to blazetv.com slash stew and use the code stew. You'll save 20 bucks. Glenn, thank you for coming on. Thank you. Well, if you want a good real estate agent, you can threaten them with a firearm. Um, that's probably not the best way to do it. We should probably go to realestateagentsitrust.com. Realestateagentsitrust.com is a place to go to find the best agent in your area, whether you're buying a home or selling a home. It doesn't matter where you are in the country. Uh, they have sorted through this. They've looked through these agents already. They've screened them. They've looked for the agents with the best performance possible. And they went through all the qualifications that lead to the best deals. And when you can go through that sort of process, and it's a rigorous process, on the other side, you come out with the best collection of agents anywhere you'll ever find. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go. When you're buying or selling a home, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. You don't want to trust that to just some person you know or a friend of a person you know or some random person you found on a bench ad. You want to find a, a way to look through all of the agents and find the best one possible for you in your situation. And that's where Real Estate Agents I Trust comes in. It's a free service to you. Check it out today, realestateagentsitrust.com. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. Uh, I haven't checked here. I'm not sure if the vote went through yet, but the House is going to be voting on the uh, impeachment inquiry, basically to formalize it. Um, and uh, this is into, of course, President Biden. This has been going on for a while. The issue is a some sort of they, they basically want legal force in case they get called into court, which, of course, they will to say that they have a formalized process. This power that they're talking about for impeachment inquiry uh, resides with the House. So they have the power. There's no question about that constitutionally, but they know they're going to get pressed on it. So they're trying to you know, cross all the T's and dot all the I's before this happens. Um, it, it's, look, they don't have a lot to, they can't really lose anybody here. They only can only lose three people. Santos leaving, uh, that was part of uh, a part of this. So you have a situation now where you're down to only three uh, people when it comes to how many you can lose on the Republican side. Though my understanding of this, reading about some of the behind the scene and the vote whipping is they're not going to have a problem. They're going to be able to get across this threshold. We will see if that holds up as the vote occurs. Um, Biden has another terrible poll. Uh, this is from the Washington Examiner. Um, nearly one fifth, one fifth of black voters say they want another option. And that's not exactly the headline to this story is a little misleading because you might say, wow, he's lost 20 percent of the black vote. That's not exactly true. It's actually much worse than that. OK, because, yes, it's true. Twenty percent of voters said they would vote for a third party candidate instead of Trump or Vi Biden. So he did. He is you know, losing uh, that one fifth. However, another 17 percent, almost another fifth say they will vote for Trump. So now you're at 40 or 37 percent of black voters being lost. This would be a catastrophic number if it holds up. And I will say I'm usually really skeptical of that. I mean, to be honest with you, you occasionally get these polls, you know, even in 2020, you got some polls that look like, well, you know, made the black vote is really eroding. Um, but, you know, it was inconsistent and it didn't show up in the election. Uh, to a little bit it did. I, I can't say it didn't show up at all, but a little bit it did, just not to the numbers we're talking about here. On the other hand, uh, this has been pretty consistent in polling lately, where you're seeing really large numbers of African-Americans, younger voters, um, Latino voters who are saying, no, I'm just, I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. No. So that's pretty interesting. Finally, uh, New Hampshire Governor J uh, Chris Sununu 
has endorsed Nikki Haley. Now, this, you might say, well, who cares? Uh, you might not like Sununu. His policies are uh, probably more moderate than you are if you happen to be a, a Blaze TV subscriber. But what's interesting about that is really the Chris Christie factor. Christie really needed this endorsement. He's been in third place for a while there. He needs to be competitive and maybe beat Nikki Haley, losing that endorsement. And Sununu is very popular in the state, uh, is a massive hit to Christie. A lot of people saying he may drop out after this. He's saying he won't. Again, with a book coming out in January, I'm, I'm really skeptical. Skeptic, excuse me, skeptical. Luckily, I don't, write, I, don't, I don't write books. I only try to say the words that are inside of them. Skeptical uh, that Christie would drop out before that happens because he loses all relevance if he does so. So my guess is he goes through the New Hampshire vote. After New Hampshire, he can drop out and endorse Haley, and that's probably how this plays out after he sold, you know, whatever, 18 books uh, that he's planning to sell. But that does, you know, probably prop him up for 1 to 1.5 um, Taco Bell meals. So that's potentially there for Chris Christie's taking. Preparation is important. We talked to Glenn earlier today, um, and we we did a bunch of this stuff on radio today, talking about what happens. You know, the presidential election's coming forward. Is anyone going to be pleased with any outcome? I mean, if anything happens, I I think people are going to be potentially in the streets uh, lighting things on fire. Uh, You need to be prepared for whatever is down the road. And when we think about preparation, we might think of, uh, you know, food and water, maybe, uh, you know, security, all of these things. But you also have to think about medication. The Jace case, you got to have that on hand. It's a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. It's customizable, dozens of add-ons you can put on there. It can... can really fit your family's needs really well. And the process is simple. You just go online, you fill out a form, and then you get a prescription, life-saving medication uh, delivered right to your door. So go to jacemedical.com, enter the code STU at checkout. You will get a special discount on your order when you do that. The promo code is STU at jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E medical.com. We got a bunch of different products too. Check out the site, jacemedical.com. It's the Jace case from Jace Medical. Queers for Palestine. There's so many things to talk about here. Queers for Palestine protesters have shut down a Manhattan bridge, causing all sorts of chaos. So, so many things to talk about. Number one, do you remember when queer was a bad word? Like, I, I thought we weren't even supposed to say that. Then there was queer eye for the straight guy. And now everyone's naming themselves queer. I don't even understand that. I don't understand queers for Palestine. Obviously, if you went to um, Gaza City, and you said you were queer, you would be immediately murdered. They might actually shoot you before they shot the IDF soldiers around you. Secondly, or third, thirdly, when you do this to a bridge, you just piss people off. No one supports your cause more when you block traffic at a bridge. But let me at least, I'm going to ignore all that for today and just give you what they were chanting. You have queer, trans, no peace on stolen land. Eh. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That's a classic, classic hit. Then you've got NYPD, KKK, IDF. They're all the same. Now, they've given up on the rhyming there on that one. Um, You have queers for liberated Palestine. No pride in genocide. That one rhymes nicely. And queer Jews say F the West, let Gaza live. F the West. What wonderful messaging from these peace-loving people in Queers for Palestine. Don't forget on Christmas Day, go to Stu Does America, the YouTube page, youtube.com slash Stu Does America, and sign up. You can watch for free 24 hours of A Christmas Twist, our wonderful Christmas movie we did several years ago, starring Pat Gray, Glenn Beck, my wife Lisa Page, myself, and Jeffy. Yes, it's the greatest Christmas movie of all time. You can go now to youtube.com slash Stu Does America and like the pinned event and ask for a notification so you don't miss it on Christmas. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we've got some great giveaways uh, associated with this. We'll give you the details on that maybe tomorrow. Uh, But we're out of time for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow.